Marvelous Makers. I'm Professor John Gallagher. Welcome back to Circuit Python School. And are you ready to get motoring? Well, after this lesson, you will be sultans and sultanas of servos because we're going to learn all about attaching a standard 0 to 180 degree servo to a Raspberry Pi Pico. We'll get that servo to move to precise angles and we'll learn how we can fine tune the servo so it gives us a more precise movement. And if you're up for a challenge, you can use what you learned about servos combined with your knowledge of buttons and choosing random values in Python to build a device to randomly select what you should have for dinner. Let's motor! Now we've already covered servo motors earlier in CircuitPython school when we were working with a Circuit Playground Blue Fruit, but as a reminder, standard servos rotate in a 180 degree arc, so we'll tell the servo the angle to move to, and it moves. The little arm that attaches to the servo is called a horn. Most servos come with a variety of horns. I've hot glued this horn to a popsicle stick arrow so you can more clearly see its movement. Now a warning, do not confuse these standard 180 degree servos with continuous rotation servos. Continuous rotation servos are different motors requiring different code. We don't give continuous rotation servos an angle to turn to, we just tell them how fast they should go backward or forward, and they can rotate in circles. So newbies, be careful when buying servos. I've often bought the wrong servo for the job by not paying attention to whether or not a motor was a continuous rotation servo or not. Although less common, some servos only rotate in a 90 degree arc instead of a 180 degree arc too, so look for that. And we will use continuous rotation servos in a future lesson, and those servos will be part of a wheeled robot that we build. Now one of the nice things about servos is that they can be attached directly to a Pico and they don't require any additional hardware. Oftentimes when you see other types of motors like DC motors or stepper motors, you'll need to add additional hardware to get things working, which adds to expense and setup. Now servos like this have three wires, power, signal, and ground. The colors might seem a bit off, but the darkest wire is usually black or brown. That's your ground. My center wire here, the one that's closest to red, it might be a reddish orange on some servos, is the power. And on the Pico, this can go directly to VBus. Remember, VBus comes from the USB port and servos can handle that greater power. And the signal wire is usually at the end opposite the ground. It's typically yellow or yellowish orange. This servo has sockets at the end of the wires. I've attached these to pin pin jumper wires and attached the other end to the Pico on the breadboard. Again, power to V bus. And for my signal wire, I'm using pin GP16 here. That's the pin with this yellowish wire going into it. Now, although this is a tiny and inexpensive micro servo, other standard servos should use the same code and wiring. Although really powerful servos might require a separate power source if the USB doesn't give them enough juice. When you work with a servo, you'll need to import the library's board, PWMIO, and from Adafruit underscore motor, import servo. Now, servos are output devices because we send information out from the Pico and into the servo, and these objects work with PWM signals, so we need to create a PWM out object. We mentioned PWM in an earlier lesson. PWM stands for pulse width modulation, and it sends a series of repeating pulses of variable width that control a device. Servos use 50 pulses per second or 50 hertz, so 50 is the frequency we're going to use. So you'll almost always set up a PWM object with this line here. The only thing that's going to change is the pin name if you use a different pin. Now once we've created this PWM object, we feed that into the servo class of the servo library and give the object you've created a name. Here I'm calling it servo underscore one. Then to move the servo, we just set the servo object's angle property from 0 to 180. Let's write some code to get the servo moving, and I'll show you that sometimes the angle that you get with a servo out of the box isn't quite accurate, but I'll show you how we can fine tune things. So first I'll add a comment, servos and the Pico. Not sure why I put a dollar sign in there. I guess my mind is on my money and my money's on my mind. I'll fix that in a bit. I'll import board comma PWMIO comma time. From Adafruit underscore motor, we're also going to import the servo library. Then we'll set up our servo. First, we create our PWM out object, and we're going to call that PWM, setting it equal to PWMIO. That's from this library here, dot PWM out with PWM and O all capitalized. And we're going to pass in the pin that we've connected the servo to, board.gp16, comma, and we always set the frequency equal to 50. Then we're going to name our servo servo underscore one, and we'll set that equal to lowercase servo dot uppercase servo in parentheses, passing in the PWM object we created above. Then to move the servo, we just set the angle property in the range zero to 180. So here I'm just going to move my servo three times. I'll set servo underscore one dot angle equal to 180. Then I'll do a time sleep for two seconds. Then I'll copy these two lines and paste them twice down below. And after I move to 180, I'll move to 90 and then I'll move to zero. Now, while I don't need this on the Pico, I'm going to put in a while true pass here. On some boards I've seen, as soon as the code ends, the servo is 
isn't supplied with power, so the angle might change. Also note that once you've set up the servo and your code's running, your servo is going to constantly receive power even when it's not moving, so it's very common to hear a very low level humming or a whining noise coming from the servo. But that said, let's open the serial console and we'll take a look at how things run. Click save. So that's 180 degrees, 90, and zero. But we see the angle isn't quite right. Let's save again. You see how 180 doesn't go flat or horizontal, it's still up a little bit, and the zero also doesn't go flat. Well, this is actually pretty common with these servos. Sometimes you won't get a nice 180 degree arc, but we can tweak things in our code. When we set up our servo object like we've done here, there are actually two additional parameters that we can work with, the min underscore pulse and the max underscore pulse value. Now these are set to 750 and 2250 respectively by default, so if we don't enter these values, we get 750 and 2250. And by the way, just so that you know, if you visit the CircuitPython documentation page for the servo class, you'll see that the min underscore value here is set equal to 750 and max underscore value is set equal to 2250. So the equal sign followed by a value means that these are default values. So if we don't enter either of these parameters when we're setting up our servo object, then these values 750 or 2250 will be used by default. But let's add those parameters and change those values. So on this slide here, I'm showing you that if we increase max underscore pulse, we push the horn lower, and we can also set it to less than 2250, and that'll pull the horn up. And similarly with min pulse, if we decrease the value lower than 750, we push the horn lower. If we increase its value, we pull it up higher. So let's try to tweak these values. I've actually played with this a bit. I'm gonna set my min underscore pulse equal to 600, and my max underscore pulse equal to 2500. Now let's take a look when this runs. So I'll open the serial console and select save. And the 180 side looks great with the new max pulse, but the zero side is a little bit off. I should pull this up a little bit, so I'm going to change 600 to 650 for my min pulse, and I'll save and run again. 180 looks great. And ah, uh, now I think zero looks great too. So again, you might not have had to change any of your min pulse or your max pulse values, or you might have had to change just one of these. If you did, you likely needed different values than I've shown here, and each servo may need a different calibration effort. So if you switch out servos, you may have to go back and revisit your min and max values. Also note that you can adjust your horn so that it starts at the location where you want it to begin. And if your servo starts to whine or shake, you're probably moved too much in one direction. So back off the max value or pull the min value higher a bit. So that's the basics of servos. How about a challenge? So one thing you'll notice is that servos move abruptly from one angle location to the next, but sometimes you don't want that. Why don't you try to make your servo move slower and smoother? Sweeping from zero to 180 and back will wait one one hundredth of a second in between each degree change of your angle. So why don't you try that? Pause, give it a shot, and we'll compare answers. So I no longer need this code where I go 180, 90, and zero. So I'm gonna highlight and delete this. And then I'm gonna enter a for loop. I'm gonna say for angle in range and in parentheses 181 colon. Now I could have called this value anything, but I'm gonna call it angle. You could call it I or X, any valid variable name will do. Remember by saying 181 here, we start at zero and we go up to, but we never reach 181. So we stop at 180. Then in the line below indented, I'll say servo underscore one dot angle equals angle, and below that time dot sleep, and in parentheses 0 0.01, that'll pause for one one hundredth of a second after each angle move. Then I'll highlight these three lines of the for loop, paste them down below, and I'm just gonna wrap my range in a reversed statement. Make sure that you've got parentheses around the entire range statement. And what that will do is instead of going from zero to 180, it will start at 180 and go down to zero. Then let's open the serial console and select save, And that looked good. Let's try it again. Looking great. So I'll double click on my tab and navigate to my CircuitPython school folder, and I'm gonna save this as Pico and Servo. Then I'll reopen code.py on CircuitPy, 
If you want one more challenge, you can try the what's for dinner challenge, and that solves the age-old problem of choosing something for dinner. Now you can find, download, and print the PDF of this semicircle that I'm showing here at this URL, which will take you to the course Google Drive, or you can create your own with options you want to select for dinner. Why don't you add servo to GP16, a button to GP15, start at the neutral zero degree mark, and when a button is pressed, choose an item at random to point to. Now remember, your servo should point right in the center of an item, not along the line that separates items, make the servo slowly sweep, advancing one degree at a time and waiting 0.01 seconds in between degrees until the destination is reached, and make sure that your solution never repeats the same suggestion twice in a row. I'll end this lesson now, but if you followed CircuitPython school, you should be able to complete this on your own. And then you can invite your friends and loved ones around the Pico the next time you need to decide what's for dinner. Now I'll eventually post a solution lesson for this, but not until my students have had a chance to submit their own answers for homework. Now given what you've learned in this lesson, Skilled One, you should feel great about your ever-expanding circuit Python and electronics repertoire. Stay tuned, there's more goodness to come, and continue to hack.